Metal Gear Solid 5, Ground Zeroes, and Phantom Pain are two of my favorite games, or game singular? Uh, I don't know, it de depends on how you stack them. Despite being an incomplete product, The Phantom Pain lives on as one of the greatest games ever made. A game that more than earns its legendary status. Ground Zeroes, on the other hand, has kind of faded into obscurity and to this day is solely remembered as a premium price demo. I would say that's kind of an unfair legacy, but on the other hand, slicing off The Phantom Pain's prologue chapter and releasing it with a $30 price tag was a little too much. Well, at least for those who were willing to pony up the cash at the time. I managed to get mine on a PSN sale for only 10 bucks back in the day. Ground Zeroes may just have been a pricey demo, but it was the best demo I have ever played. And play the hell out of it, I absolutely did. Aside from generating some revenue for your old pal Uncle K, it did everything a demo was supposed to do, and it more than served its purpose. It made me want more. It got me so pumped for the full release of The Phantom Pain, which, unknown to us at the time, wouldn't come out for almost a whole 18 months later. For those of you who weren't there, the wait was excruciating, and Kojima's constant trolling wasn't exactly helping. This all came to an end on September 1st, 2015, when Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain was finally released. And though it was an improvement from the mechanics showcasing Ground Zeroes, it wasn't hard to see that Kojima and his team definitely made some tweaks before launch. Both games are their own separate beings, and seeing how they were released about a year and a half apart from each other, there are definitely some major changes between the two. The open world aspect was a change of pace, not only for the series, but for the stealth genre as a whole. For the first time in the series, you, the player, get to decide how you're going to complete the mission. Everything that occurs between your initial helicopter drop-off and your eventual exfiltration is all you. You decide what happens. In some ways, it feels like they took the play your way gameplay from Splinter Cell Blacklist and dialed it up to 11. You can go loud, play it safe, or sneak past everyone. Both games seem to have their own unique take on this bold new concept, some similar and some different. So I decided to run a little experiment I call Demo vs Final Product. We're going to play both games side by side and figure out what was changed, what was improved, and what didn't make the final cut. And hopefully by the end we'll know for sure if those 18 extra months were worth the wait. Alright alright, let's cut the shuffle and get right to the good stuff. This is Ground Zeroes vs Phantom Pain. Let's start off with the first thing you'll notice about these games, their gorgeous graphics. Not to mention a buttery smooth frame rate that was definitely worth the price of admission. The newly designed Fox engine was a powerhouse, being able to create photorealistic worlds and environments. Both games still hold up incredibly well, even in this age of native 4K consoles. The graphics also blend well with the game's real-time and weather mechanics. Rainy infiltration missions can help you sneak past armed goons pretty easily, and deciding when to take on your mission is crucial. Do you walk into an enemy base in broad daylight and risk getting noticed, or do you pull out a phantom cigar and wait for nightfall? It's something to think about, seeing how there's no real right or wrong approach, there's only how you choose to play. Both games are graphically amazing, but the phantom cigar goes to the phantom pain on this one. Probably the biggest difference between the two comes in the form of their respective menus. Phantom Pain's menu is pretty excessive and somewhat intimidating. Variables and pages of text litter the screen. Your mission screen doesn't fare much better, just numbered missions and a few side missions that you're free to partake in. Compare that to Ground Zeroes where cycling through your mission menu is a breeze. The missions are better represented with a visual tease of what's to come and the option to play the mission in either normal or hard mode. And this doesn't just go for the prologue chapter, all side missions have this as well. For some reason, both of these features were removed from the Phantom Pain. Why? Don't get me wrong, some missions can be played on a higher difficulty, but not all. Side missions don't even get that option, but more on that later. The menu found in Ground Zeroes has more style and personality, and it's what I was hoping to find in the completed version of Phantom Pain. It's a rare example of a demo outdoing its final form. And for that reason, the point 
goes to Ground Zeroes. Next, let's check out your iDroid. Yes, iDroid. Apple and Google's greatest fear just so happens to be your most versatile item in the game. It functions the same in both games, with a few features missing on both sides. In both games, it serves as a map, a waypoint, an MP3, a radio to contact Intel. It's basically a modern smartphone with a super cool holographic display. Apple and Google, take notes. In The Phantom Pain, you're free to play around with the iDroid to your heart's content. You can build additional bases, buy and customize weapons, and even order supply drops when out on a mission. Ground Zeroes may be lacking in some of those cooler features, it was a demo, remind you, but it more than makes up for it by having an awesome map. You pull it up and you're instantly blown away by how detailed and beautiful it is. I immediately have access to the entire layout of the base. You can move the map around to get a better view of the camp, and the effect is just great. It may sound corny, but there's something to be said about having fun with an open world map and seeing how unique it is. Phantom Pain's map, on the other hand, is nothing like that. It's nowhere near as imaginative or animated enough to keep me interested. Out of all the tweaks made in between games, this one has to be the most bizarre. How did we go from an innovative map to the same standard, boring-ass map that could be found in literally every other open world game since the dawn of man? 18 months in between games and you guys couldn't have changed things up a bit? Phantom Pain's iDroid may have had more features, but Ground Zeroes' simple task and awesome map are enough for me to offer it another point. This round goes to Ground Zeroes. Both games have an awesome arsenal of guns and other goodies to help you see your mission through to the end. In Phantom Pain, you have to buy your way down to the good stuff, while in Ground Zeroes, you have to earn your new arms through better mission scores or by challenging yourself in hard mode. So either way, if you want the fun weapons, you're going to have to work for them. The displays for both weapons are also unique. In Ground Zeroes, your weapons and items are displayed with these really cool silhouettes. I kind of like it, really. In Phantom Pain, your weapon display is detailed and clear. You can clearly see the weapons and any attachments you may have added to them. I kind of like this one, too. If I were to pick who wins this round, I would have to say it's... a tie. Both games have great weapons and items to play around with, and it wouldn't feel right to acknowledge one without the other. So, I'm gonna call it a draw. If there's one thing that hooked me from the start, it was the gameplay. The stiff and archaic controls from past Metal Gear games was gone. Now it's fluid, precise, and unbelievably addicting. How you take on your missions and how you accomplish your goals is up to you. You can go ghost and sneak past as many unsuspecting guards as possible, or you can go full on 80s Arnold and go in guns ablazing, cutting through anyone who stands in your way. And it's made all the more satisfying with probably one of the coolest mechanics to ever be featured in any stealth game. Reflex mode. Should you accidentally or intentionally be spotted by a guard, Snake will enter a sort of bullet mode where time slows down and you're turned in the direction of your spotter. Here, you could whip out your gun and either put them to sleep, or put them in the grave. It makes both games a blast to play, pun fully intended. Reflex mode aside, there's a few new wrinkles to Snake's moveset. He can effortlessly go from prone to full on sprint in no time. And he can pull off a lunge move that can help you evade guards and stay out of sight. The lunge dive is kind of off in Ground Zeroes, something they definitely managed to perfect in Phantom Pain sending you into a diving prone instead of a crouching position. The game's dynamic day and night cycle is absent in Ground Zeroes. You'll have to play all the side missions to see the other times of the day unfold. Where both games differ is in their side missions. Side ops can be replayed in Ground Zeroes, and to their credit, they actually feel like real missions with goals, objectives, rewards, and every reason to replay them over and over. The side missions in Phantom Pain are less like actual missions and more like the random encounters you'd find in any Rockstar game. You can still pull off the mission if you want, but aside from the GMP and being able to fault in stuff and surviving soldiers to your mother base, there's a little incentive to want to complete them. The way they're coded into the game is a bit of an enigma, 
Some can be replayed once or twice. Some are infinitely replayable. I really don't understand what's going on here. It may have something to do with your completion level or current mission ranks, but whatever. All I'm saying is a replay option would have been nice. So who gets the point here? It's hard to compare and contrast seeing how they basically share the same DNA. But as far as fun goes, I would have to say that Ground Zeroes wins this round. I love Phantom Pain, but sometimes I just want a fun, quick stealth action fix where I don't have to worry about managing people, bringing back supplies, or worrying about how good of a legendary soldier I am. Sometimes I just want to play something that requires no commitments and has less clutter to contend with. And Ground Zeroes definitely delivers. Point goes to Ground Zeroes. I can already see the comments feeling with things like, Dude, you're giving all the points to a glorified demo? And yes, that may be the case, but there's some unfortunate irony attached to this whole story, being that in many ways, Ground Zeroes is more of a complete game than Phantom Pain. Hear me out, I'm going somewhere with this. Long before either of these games dropped, there was already some bad blood brewing between Kojima and Konami. At the time, their console market wasn't exactly doing great, and they were looking for any way to make some extra dough. That $30 price tag probably makes a little more sense now, right? <sighs> but it didn't end there. In early 2015, it was announced that Kojima and his team would be leaving the company shortly after the release of The Phantom Pain. Despite Kojima's promise that he would finish the game, it's pretty clear from the final product that he didn't. Well, not all of it. If anything, only about two-thirds of the intended game is here. People who got the pre-order, like me, got a look at what could have been the fully realized final act and boss fight, setting the stage for the original Metal Gear MSX. It was a great bonus feature, but it feels more like a what-if amongst countless other what-ifs that will never see the light of day. And while I have no trouble playing either of these two nowadays, I'd have to give the belt to Ground Zeroes. Its innovation, great mission structure, and most importantly, replayability, is what makes it the standout contender. And while we may never know the full extent of what caused Phantom Pain to be lesser than the demo that came before, Ground Zero serves as one of video games history's greatest what-ifs. What if they actually had time to improve upon everything and, you know, actually finish the game? Maybe Metal Gear would have the send-off it rightfully deserves. But as Kojima said himself, Phantom Pain is, at least to him, the final Metal Gear game. And seeing who has the copyright and what he's been up to as of late, it would appear that he has no intention of amending his original statement. Even if this truly is the last Metal Gear game straight from the man himself, it was a great note to go out on. And with a fanbase this massive, we'll be replaying this saga for years to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.